For this example, you will notice that it has sums and differences in the denominator. So that is going to keep it from being a power problem. And it's not a first power, so it can't be the exponential. It's got to be a combination of sine and or cosine. But you will notice that it doesn't have the something squared plus a number format. So what we have to do is rewrite this so that it does have that proper format for taking the inverse. And to do that, we will go back to what we've done earlier this semester, which is completing the square. So when we take our inverse here, you will notice that we're going to complete the square by doing an addition and subtraction. And we have to always make sure we have a coefficient of 1 on the s squared to do this. So remember, when you complete the square, you always take half of that middle number and square it and add it. So in that case, we're going to be adding in a plus 4 since negative 2 squared is 4. To keep it balanced and equal, however, we have to subtract out 4 at the same time. And then we still have the plus 13 behind our term. Okay, next thing you'll notice is that these first three terms... They are going to make a perfect square, and those other last two terms, well, we can just combine those together to make a single number from them. So if we go ahead now and actually write that in a factored form, that's just s minus 2 times s minus 2. So that is s minus 2 quantity squared. And of course, if we add up a negative 4 and a 13, we get the number 9. So we're going to have something that is kind of familiar from our previous example. Let's kind of go in and write that S a little nicer so it's a little easier to read. All right, so now if you look at this, because it has a number in the numerator and not a variable S, this is going to be a sign problem. But once again, we have the same issue we've seen before where we need to have the 3 be in our numerator for this to be a true inverse. So just like before, we will multiply the top and bottom of this expression by 3. And when we do this, that 2 and that 3 will come out front as a coefficient. So we'll have 2 thirds in front of our inverse transform of 3 over s minus 2 squared plus 9. So this now looks like a sine inverse, but again, because we have the s minus 2 instead of s, it's going to be exponential. So we're going to have a 2 thirds. We're going to have an e to the 2 times t, because again, c is equal to 2 here. And then we're going to multiply that by the sine of 3 times t. And that right there will be the inverse of our original transformation.